Next on the Tesla Plaid channel. Tesla Plaid channel. We're on our way out to Showtime Drag Strip. Just a quick update, our second Plaid just arrived today into Tampa. It's there going through the pre-delivery prep and we're picking it up the day after tomorrow, Friday, probably by the time you're watching this video. We're hoping to test that on Saturday if it's dry here. We got good weather tonight, that's good news. We've also got the Nittos on the back of the car once again. A lot of people have been asking why we didn't run those the last couple of nights, especially out at Orlando and Bradenton in the quarter mile tracks. And I'll tell you, I like testing tires, but I don't like testing tires at 159 miles an hour. So, you know, I'm not crazy. I will test these tires, figure out the right pressure level. We're gonna start tonight with 40 PSI and take it down from there. So remember this car is almost 5,000 pounds and heavier vehicles need more air in the tires. So we'll see how the tires do tonight and let's see what interesting cars we can find out there at Showtime. It's Wednesday night, that means we're out at Showtime Drag Strip out here in Pinellas Park, Florida. We do have the Nittos on again tonight. You can see the specs on the tire here. It's a 285, 35 series on a 20 inch rim. We're gonna start our testing at 40 pounds and bring them down from there. Last couple weeks we've been out of quarter mile tracks and we didn't want to test these tires at a 150 plus mile an hour. So we'll test them here in the eighth mile, do 120 on them, see how they hook up. So we got to the track here tonight with 98% and track's just opening right now, six o'clock. I think we're gonna go to drag strip mode and uh, use that for our baseline first pass. Setting it to drag strip says it'll take 13 minutes to be ready, so maybe around 6.15 or so. All right, the car just popped up with peak performance ready. It's uh, 6.16 and ready to go. And now we got drips on the windshield. There was no rain in the forecast at all today. Hopefully this uh, is just a couple drops. We're still at peak performance ready. It's only about five minutes since those uh, couple of drops fell, but nothing else has fallen, so. So we got a race against this Cougar lined up, so I don't think we're gonna be able to stage launch control. We got 41 warm pounds in the tires and the nittos. Whoa, 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 sorry. All right, this is gonna be an actual drag race here, so we gotta play it like one. We need a decent tree. This car is fast. start the draggy. That's too bad. I'll start the draggy now for the next race. 90 degrees out here tonight. Pretty brutal and humid as heck. 604. 120. 604. That's my best pass out here. 47. 60 foot. Nice. These tires. I put the nittos back on. All right, that's the fastest eighth mile we've ever run at this track. We've run 602 and 603 out at Bradenton, different animal on a different night, different conditions. But a 604 to 120.1, 120 
with a 1.47 60 foot. The Cougar ran a 656 at 104.4 miles an hour. Finish line margin was 0.36. So I think the tires like this higher amount of pressure. You know, I appreciate everyone's input in their comments. Some people suggested I drop them down to 20 pounds. Some people suggested I air them up into the 40s and every suggestion in between. But I kind of suspected that uh, they might respond well to high pressure like this. So we're at 41 warm pounds. We uh, aired them up to exactly 40.0 cold before we left the house. Remember, we didn't even use launch mode on that pass. So I'm gonna make another pass right away, same everything, except I'm gonna use launch mode and see if we can beat that 604. Well, 604 on these tires, these Nittos. That's the fastest pass I've made out here. 604 what, 120 still? Yeah. 120, is that gonna be the peak on it? Uh, I don't think I'm gonna get more than about 120 and a half. We did a uh, 120.1 on that pass. It's all about how quick I can get out of the hole and hook up. Right. But that uh, was a 147 60 foot. And when you consider this is a 5,000 pound vehicle. Oh, shit, yeah. You know, is that what it weighs, five grand? With Holy me in it, it's 4,800 empty. Damn. Yeah. So. All right, well, take it away, Bubba. I'm gonna go solo on this one. All right, we're gonna make a solo pass here. We're gonna stage it up this time. Okay, peak performance ready. We're at 96% on this pass. And our goal is to get it fully, fully staged. Here we go. And now. Yeah, that's a strong pass. Oh, this could be it. This could be a five. That pass felt really strong. It's all on the launch. You know in the first second and a half if you got a really strong pass. I like the way that felt. Come on five. Come on five. 608, 120, 650, 60 foot. Man, that felt like a really strong pass too. They all look like good passes, man. I mean, this car is just so fast off the line. I'm gonna try the other lane. We ran a 608 at 120.2. A little more in a mile an hour than the first pass, but a little less ET, and ran a 15060 foot. Let's try the other lane. All right, let's try launch mode yet again. Peak performance ready. We're at 94% battery charge right now. Stage this up. Oh, come on, car. Preparing for launch. And go. Come on, car. Felt like a strong pass. I wouldn't say it leapt off the line. I'm not going to get my hopes too high. Just don't know what to expect. I'm sure it's a low 6, a 6.0. 6.07, 121. 121. I think if you look maybe a pound out of your tires, because you come out of the hole so fast that your tires are going to really tall up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm here to play with them tonight, so I'm going to drop it down. Um, that might be the most mile an hour I've ever had. Yeah, 121. 121. Yeah. The record 122.7. In the eighth? Wow. Okay, cool. 600, 122.7. Okay, and a 149, 60 foot, better than the previous. I'll take yeah. the air down a little bit. All right. Tom's got a lot of experience out here with a lot of cars and bikes, too. We ran a 121.00 with a 607 ET and a 149.60 foot. Solid pass, that's the most mile an hour we've ever ran in this car. Not the best ET, but right up there. So let's let a little bit of air out and uh, make another pass. All right, we're still at drag strip, peak performance ready. 92% battery now. These eighth mile passes seem to be using somewhere between one and a half, uh, two percent maybe. I'll analyze it at the end of the night. We're staging up, preparing for launch, and let's do it. A little bit 
bit of squeak there. I heard a little more out of the tires that time than the previous passes. We dropped the air down to 39 pounds before this run. I should have caught that on video, I didn't. After those first three passes, the tires obviously got warmer and they were showing 42 pounds of pressure. So I let three pounds out of each tire and they're at 39.0 now. 609, 120. 609. Try the other one again. I dropped three pounds out of them. They got up to 42 Yeah. from being warm. 40 was my baseline. They got up to 42, they're at 39 now. I know that sounds like a lot, but remember it's a really heavy car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll try the other lane. So we lost about a whole mile an hour versus the previous pass, and that could just be from letting the air out. Less air is more rolling resistance, and that could absolutely hurt mile an hour. So we went from 121.0 to 120.0 and ran a 609. Let's make a pass in the other lane and then decide where we want to go from there. But if our mile an hour stays down like that, then I'm gonna air them back up. Hey, do you want to go through the metal so I can through the water? Yeah. <laughs> I like exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brony. You know, being a preferred customer and all. Much appreciated. <laughs> hey, uh, did I tell you? Okay, appreciate it. Well, they're gonna make a exception for me and I really like these guys. They're gonna let me go down the middle. Which means I don't get my tires wet to begin with. I guess if I was really serious about it, I'd even take those cameras off, right? Do they give me a little bit of uh, wind resistance? We are at 90%. Peak performance ready, drag strip mode, and Try to find a sticky spot. Preparing for launch. Let's do it. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That also felt like a very strong pass. We heard just a little bit from the tires, not too much. 611, 121.29. Now that's the most mile an hour so far. <laughs> so, okay. That tells me it's not losing mile an hour due to air pressure. I mean, if you can do 121.2 on that pass, but it seems like the more mile an hour I have, the less ET I have. Yeah. I'm nuts. All right. Thanks, Tom. Interesting. I don't know what to make of these slips. That was a 611 at 121.29. That's the absolute fastest mile an hour we've done in the eighth mile. And yet, it's also, I think, our slowest DT of the entire night. I don't think traction's our issue. I think these tires are doing their job. Um, evidently, there was a lot of rocks under your tires. What is that? Yeah, so they want you back through the water again now. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. 121.3 on that pass. And it ran a what, though? 611. The 611. It slowed. That's it's the slow slowest day. ET of the entire night and the fastest mile an hour of the entire night. What was 60 foot? 150, I think. And your other ones were what, 140 something? Yeah, 147, 148. It doesn't make any sense. I'm losing it at the line and getting it back at the top end. Well, Every it's motoring time. at the top end. <laughs> All right, well. 120, 121's pretty quick. Yep, I'm gonna do another one. Um, maybe I go left lane again. I gave him the option. Uh, Robert said there was a lot of water up there, or rocks from the tires, so we're gonna shut the middle again. He understands, he's cool with it. Okay, I gotta go through the water box, that's the rule. I'm gonna just try to get anything off my tires that might be on them. We are at 89%, so it's using somewhere between one and 2%. Maybe call it one and a half, but I'll do the analysis at the end of the video. Okay, we're staging up, preparing for launch, and we are fully staged. Let's go. Felt like another strong pass. Okay, we're at 87 now after that run. So, so we've used 11% of our battery on six passes, which tells me it's just a little bit less than 2% per pass here, eighth mile at 120 miles an hour. 
109, 119. Seem to be stuck at that 403, 404, right yeah. there at the 330. Yeah. Well, my battery's down. I'm at 87 after six passes, so I'm gonna. Uh, I'll just race some cars the rest of the night, and we'll uh, try it again on uh, Saturday. Yeah. So on that pass, we ran a 609 at 119.7. Mile an hour came down a little bit. ET came down a little bit from the 611 to a 609. So I think the power is starting to wane a little bit here. I think as far as just straight testing launch mode and the tires, that's gonna do it for that portion of the night. I'm gonna uh, race some cars now. There's some interesting cars out here tonight. Some really fast ones on big tire, full slicks. So let's see who we can line up with. All right, we've raced the Monza many times before, but not since we got the Plaid. Seemed like he was beating me in the Raven the last two, three times we ran. I had a few good lights and uh, made it competitive. We're usually within a tenth of a second in the Raven. He's running a pretty consistent 670. Plaid should uh, get the job done, but you never know. If I spin, if I sleep with the light, have any problems with the light, this car will eat me up. Check out the size of these Hoosier slicks. We've got wheelie bars and knees on this car. Flips the front tires all day long. Those of you that have been watching the channel for a while might recognize this Monza. We've raced a number of times and used to be we were kind of back and forth. I'd win a race, he'd win a race. But um, just before I retired the uh, Raven, he was beating me most of the time. first race since we got the plaid and um, I owe him a defeat now it's a full-on drag car big tire I'm sure he's gonna be doing a wheelie here he's on wheelie bars of course I'm not gonna be too aggressive on this light I don't think I need to be jumped right out of the frame of the camera. 630, 118, he had you to the 330 and then whoosh. That car is quick, 200, launches. 200s by, 200 by the 330 and then. Wow. <laughs> I ran a 630 at 118.8. He ran a 662 at 102.5. And he had an awesome reaction, a uh, 019. And I had a 0.12, I was going for about a tenth. I wasn't trying to be too aggressive. He had a 141 60 foot to my 159. Now I was only in plaid mode. I didn't go drag strip or launch control, but a good race. All right, we've got a twin turbo E63 S here. This is a six second AMG, AMG E63S. And it sounds like he's got a tune on there, but unfortunately he doesn't have a helmet. He's doing another burnout apparently. Here he comes. All right, I'm gonna take this off the tree because uh, I heard the staff tell him to lift at some point. Since he doesn't have, since he doesn't have a helmet on. racing to the half track of uh, this eighth mile which is uh, 330 feet. Maybe I shouldn't have shown him what we've got because he might not want to race me next time when he comes out fully equipped and ready to race. 
So you ran a 623 at 119.1 mile an hour. The 60 foots were actually pretty close. That uh, AMG ran a 159 60 foot to my 156, and his 330 was a 4.5 to my 4.1. I was already pulling him well ahead by the half track, which is probably about the time he got out of it. Fun race. Once he's got a helmet, we'll race the full track. This Grand National runs between 32 and 35 pounds of boost in that Turbo 6. And he's on full slicks tonight, it looks like. It actually says uh, ET Street Radial Pro, but I'm not seeing any tread left on that tire. All right, here's a grudge. This Grand National and I have raced a number of times, and he says he's got something for me tonight. He's apparently turned it way up. And he's expecting to make the fastest pass he's ever made. I wonder if he's just trying to get into my head, so I'll red light here. I'm going to try to cut it not too close. We talked about how to stage here. I'm gonna take one bulb, and then he's gonna take a bulb, and he's gonna build boost. These turbo cars have to stage a certain way so they can get up on boost, all right? car jumped and mine was behind it had to have been him red lighting there I'll take the win either way but I think I crossed the finish line ahead as well in which case I would have beat him three different ways beat him on the tree by way of his red light beat him on the finish line as well as I'd beat him on ET if I did both of those 625 118 did he have his best pass ever 650 now uh, yeah he's always stuck right around that 650 yeah he thought he had something for me yeah, they, they made some adjustments, and I guess it worked. <laughs> it was really close at the finish. You see that? 02 at the finish line. Really close. So I ran a 625 at 118.8, and he ran a 650 at 105.9. He red lit significantly by a 0.12. Finish line was dang close. 02, two hundredths of a second. I just passed him right before we crossed the traps. So. Good fun race. All right, the Grand National asked for a rematch, and who am I to say no, you know? What do you bet he turned up his boost even higher? Okay, I gotta cut the light a little closer. Ready, set, go! Controlling how far out the car gets on me. 622, 118. Nice. He had a, he had a 006 reaction. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> he was right on that light. <laughs> oh man, my light was no better than my last one. I think I had a 0.12 on the last one and now it's a 0.14. I've been giving cars the move almost entirely the last three weeks, so. I'm getting rusty on my reaction times. Yeah, he had a double O, but he only ran a 660, so I took him by 0.24 at the finish line. I ran a 622 at 118.9, and he ran a 660 at 105.7. Other than his awesome reaction time, he had a 150 60 foot 
to my 156. Paid for a good race. You nailed that light, man. You know, Double I'm up. good at the light now with the brake. I just got the, the factory coil pack. My real good shit is yeah. fucked up. So I can only go past 32. When I put it at 35, I didn't have no power at the end. You seen at the end? Uh, so sure. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little more off the line. Bring the boost down and just get a little. Try to get a little consistent. In. So you had 35 on that last run, and 32 on the run before. Yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna bring it back to 32, but off the line I'm gonna go like 26. That last time I did 16, so I'm gonna put it at 26 off the line. Gonna cool off and we'll do it one more time. All right, the Grand National wants to go once more. Oh, he's gonna catch me off guard here. I'm totally not ready, but that's fine. I'll give him what I got. Going all day long here. See if that light was any good. I don't know. 623, 118. Do I have a decent light? I think I got out ahead of him. Oh yeah. Oh, there we go. 04. My best light in a while. <laughs> you know, I haven't been trying to cut trees because you know, this car's got enough power to catch up. And I don't want to risk red lighting, but yeah. <laughs> I thought I might need it that time. Uh huh. Yeah, his light was abysmal. He had a 0.25 light. That's like both of my previous lights put together and I had an 04. He did have a double zero on that previous pass so props to uh, you Luis for that awesome reaction on the previous run. That's three for three against the Grand National tonight. This might be our last pass of the night. We're running against my buddy Joe and his white C8 Corvette. Those of you that have been watching the channel for a while have seen Joe before. We raced quite a number of times in my previous Tesla, but not against the uh, Plaid before. And I am gonna give Joe the move here. In fact, I'm gonna give him a generous move. He's not going to know how big this move is until he watches it back on video later. Okay, let's wait till Joe gets fully across the line. There we go. Okay, let's wait till Joe gets fully across the line. There we go. And this is only an eighth level. <laughs> be no better way for him to experience it than for him to get some momentum going and feel like he's well out on me as he was there's a guy on the food network that says you need to season with authority well i wanted to pass him with authority 626 all right we ran a 626 at 118.4 and the C8 Corvette ran a 7.56 at 95 miles an hour. At the finish line, we were 0.44 ahead of him. Not quite half a second, but we did give him a very generous head start there. The difference between our reaction times was almost a second, so allowed him to get out and build up some speed and then witness the power of the plaid. All right, that was a great night of racing. I had a lot of fun. I always enjoy showtime because there's no restrictions and I can just make as many flat out passes as I like. Yeah, it's a, only an eighth mile, but heck, I'm hitting 121 plus mile an hour. As I said in my last post, that is quite enough. 
We raced three really fast cars tonight. That Cougar at the beginning, the Monza doing its wheelies, and the Grand National. They've got an event out here on Saturday night where the fastest cars come out. They call it Street Wars, and I'm looking forward to that. We left the track with 74% tonight. We made a lot of passes, but it looked like we used less than 2% per pass, something between one and a half and 2% for these eighth mile passes. All right, only about 36 hours, I'll be picking up the other blue Tesla Plaid, just like this one, except with 19 inch wheels. By the time this video is posted, I'll probably already have that car. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time right here on the Tesla Plaid channel. All right, nothing to see here, nothing to see here. We got the custom license plate on our new plaid. We also got this plaid. So we've got 21 inch wheels and 19 inch wheels now. There's the 21s that we've had for the last few weeks. And there's the new 19 inch wheels, which look like it's just another cover like the Model 3 had. Haven't taken this one off yet, but I'll uh, check that out soon. And we do still have the 20 inch wheels with the nittos on the back of the old one. So just put the decals on and if we can get a move on, we can still race tonight out at Orlando. So if you're wondering why I haven't had a chance to edit the delivery video from this morning, well, I can either go out and test this car tonight at Orlando or I can work on video editing. So I'm gonna choose to go out to Orlando and test these new wheels on this new car, see if it's tuned the same. And then we'll present the full delivery video with this car and maybe a walkthrough of the cars 